<laughs> okay. So before I get to this, uh, through our class on probate, okay, and how to attract business as a real estate practitioner in, within probate, a couple things I want to do. That I need to make sure that there's a quick disclaimer. Number one, there is this is not legal advice. Okay, I am not an attorney. I'm not licensed as an attorney, and this information is being given to us from the perspective of a real estate practitioner. Okay? Now that that legal disclaimer is out of the way, now we can get started. Okay? So really quickly, um, let's talk about probate. Okay? Um, probate should be a part of your real estate business just like any other aspect of your real estate business. So there's short sales, there's retail, there's luxury, there's REO, and essentially what I'm about to teach you here, you guys, is how to go out there and how to make probate an arm, a branch of that business, okay? Um, it, it, you guys know finances, right? Or finance, where they, t they tell you to go out and invest your money, right? And, and they want you to do wealth management. If you've ever done any type of wealth management, one of the things that you'll learn is that they don't recommend ever investing any more than 5 to 10% of your income into one, uh, one fund or one stock. They tell you to diversify. As a real estate practitioner, it's very important that we diversify as well. In other words, you don't ever want to make sure that, that you're just an REO agent, that you're just a short sale agent, that you're just a luxury home agent. It's important to specialize in those industries, but anytime you make those your one type of business or your one type of, of segment of, of, of industry, what happens when you put all your eggs in one basket? Right? And, and, that, and if that type of market takes a tank, it affects your income. Okay, so my recommendation to you guys is, Take what I'm, what I'm going to teach you guys today, take that and make this one of the, your tools on, in your tool belt, okay? Make this part of your rep, repertoire so that you can go back and you can use it in your local markets. It's very, very important that you understand that mindset, okay? Um, now, let's talk about probate. Probate, when someone uh, passes on and they have a will, and the will basically decrees how their estate and how their property is going to be um, split up amongst the heirs, that's essentially what probate is, okay? Now let's talk about probate because again, I'm speaking to you guys from the perspective of a real estate practitioner, okay? From our perspective, we want to assist them to do what? To help them sell the property, okay? I understand that, that's our mindset. But we're, when we're approaching them, what is their mindset? Especially if we're approaching the heirs. Right, okay, but let's not talk about the, the lawyers right now. We're approaching a family that is essentially going to be what? Grieving, Grieving. right? So their mindset may not, they might not necessarily be in the right frame of mind to even discuss that quite yet, okay? So a, a, a big part of what I'm gonna be sharing with you too is make sure that when we're talking to these people that we're actually speaking to them from a place of compassion, from a place of empathy, from a place where we really actually care versus, as Mike Ferry puts it, versus us having what? Commission breath, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's very easy, it's very, in fact, and I'm, and I'm speaking from experience, even when I was showing empathy, even when I was showing compassion for some of these people, I've had people that became clients initially call me an ambulance chaser. You guys know what an ambulance chaser is, right? Yes. Okay, so I mean it's happened to me and I'm sharing that with you because it's very important that you understand that our frame of mind and their frame of mind may not, may not be in the same, at the same level quite yet, okay? It takes a little bit of time. We've all know what it's like, I think at some point or another, we, we, we've had a lost a loved one. So understand that we're approaching them from that angle, from that perspective, and that's where they're going to be at. So it's very important that you have that compassion and you have that, that empathy. Okay. Now, with probate, and I'm going to get into the, the meats and potato of it, but here's the other thing. You, got, you have to understand that probate, even though it's a different sector of real estate, it's still going to require prospecting, you guys. Okay. So it's very important that we talk about that too, because you're going to have to be contacting people. You're going to have to be speaking to people. That means you're going to be speaking to heirs. That means you're going to be speaking to uh, attorneys. Right? That means you could be speaking to a, a estate planners, CPAs, who knows, but anyone that, that is involved in that type of, of, of business where they're going to be assisting the heirs, set up their wills, their living trusts, their estates, you're going to be speaking to those type of people and prospecting those type of people as well, including the heirs. Okay? So it's going to require you to do, you know, as I like to put it, you know, weightlifting in the office. You're going to have to pick up the phone. Right? Does the phone feel like it weighs a lot sometimes? Yeah, you're gonna have to curl the phone, right? Pick it up, and you're gonna have to call. It's going to require prospecting. 
So you, you might as well accept that as well. Probate and the business of probate from the perspective of a real estate agent, aside from the fact that it's different forms and it's a different type of real estate, it's still going to require prospecting. I'm going to teach you who to prospect and how to prospect them and how to call them and how to, how to, how to approach them. Is that okay? Okay, cool. So um, how do you get the clients, right? Let's talk about that. Okay, we need to get clients. We are paid in direct proportion to the number of clients that we serve, yes or no? Yes. yes. So the more clients we serve, the more income we generate. How do we get the clients in probate? Okay, I'm going to give you the easiest one. First one, referrals. Okay. When it comes to probate, believe it or not, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove my point. Michelle, did you not just pick up a probate? You did. How, how did you get that client? Okay. And she just happened to be. She well, she's she has an energy, and she called. But she's not the legal owner of the property, right? No. Okay. And I asked for the owner, and she's the daughter. Passed on, needs to do probate. Yes. So that's, we're going to go back to that. So the other one is, okay, so referrals is important. It's not internet right now. So, so now we have, we also have the advertisements, right? Because if you guys don't know it or not, they have to advertise a probate, right? If court confirmation is, is required, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But there's the advertisements, they have to advertise it. Where else? Attorney, 
Pasadena, Google these attorneys that specialize in that. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to obviously want to contact these people and you're going to want to introduce yourself. Now let me ask you a question. How difficult is it getting past the receptionist to get a hold of the attorney? Tough. It can be very tough. It can be very tough. Okay? So I will tell you that you know, you're not always going to be able to get a hold of the attorney just calling them directly, but is it a numbers game? It totally is a numbers game. That's just the way the business is. Okay? That's, I mean, there's no way around this. Now, the other way to get to attorneys is, to, is by joining um, networking clubs, networking sessions. You know, the LA County Bar Association, L, it's called LACBA. LA County Bar Association is an association that on a monthly basis, maybe not monthly, but they hold regular meetings, they hold regular events where the attorneys get together and you can actually, as an agent, you can sponsor booths and you can participate in those events as well. A lot of attorneys, they participate in this, okay? If you're not a member of LACPA, I would urge you to actually become an affiliate member. Believe it or not, as real estate practitioners, you can become an affiliate member of LACPA and basically you can participate in all, all, of, the, all of the events that they go and they participate in as well. So, I mean, if the LA County Bar Association is hosting events, do you think there's going to be attorneys? Yes. Yes. Is it going to be, is it going to require some network? Is yes. it going to require you to hand out some business cards? Is it going to require you to talk? Yes, that's the business that we're in. Okay, you want to meet and introduce yourself to as many attorneys that handle this as possible. Okay, and you want to let them know that you actually specialize in probate. You work in, in, in trust sales as well. Okay, now I understand that everybody has their first day. Okay, I was green too. I've done all this. I know what this is like. So understand that if you're just getting new to probate, there's nothing wrong with saying my company specializes in probate sales. You don't have to necessarily say something that isn't true. You don't have to say you specialize in something in probate sales, but you can use us as leverage, as crutch, and you can say they, they do specialize in probate sales. They do do a lot of probate sales, and you can just reference us as, as that support system. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's how you can talk to them. And then we talked about the courts. Now, going down to, um, to the L.A. County Courthouse, I will tell you that is an amazing spider web in terms of finding the actual files. Okay? It's a lot more challenging <coughs> than in downtown. We've done it. I've done it. And I was just there last Thursday because I we just did a probate, a trust sale, and I had to go down there and I had to get physical hard copies, not hard copies, but certified copies, copies that are certified by the court for an estate sale, a trust sale that, that we were selling here in real estate. And I can tell you that when I walked in those doors, there were people that had stacks and stacks and stacks of files and folders, and they were there with their laptops, and they, they were just keying in the information, okay? Those people, those are people that are actually paid as data entry for, for websites where you can actually purchase those leads, believe it or not. Okay? Um, you guys have all heard of Mike, um, oh. Mike Torres, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he has a website. What are his, what's his website? ProbateLeads.com? Oh, yes. Probate ProbateLeads.com? I don't know. Okay. So there's ProbateLeads.com. Anyway, just Google Probate Leads. Okay. Google probate leads, and I will tell you that there are several organizations that go to the courts, the LA County Courthouse, on a regular basis, and they are there with files, and they're there extracting the information from these files regularly, and you can purchase them. And they, the, the leads will range anywhere from 50 cents up to $1.50, okay? But you can purchase these leads all day long, okay? And you can purchase these and understand that if you don't call them, it doesn't make a lick of difference, okay? It's just like having a farm package that you're not prospecting. So it goes back to my initial comment, which was probate is still going to require prospecting from us as real estate practitioners. Okay? So you can actually purchase leads. Okay? I'll be honest with you. I actually purchase leads because of my time and because of what I'm doing. I don't have the time to go down to the courthouse to get that information myself. If you don't want to purchase the leads, you can go down to the courts and you can start extracting the files. My suggestion is if you value your time and you don't want to do that, just find a website that you like where you can purchase the leads themselves. Okay? I think for Mike Torres it's like 50 bucks a month and then it's like 5 cents a lead or something like that. So, something to that effect. I mean, you can check it, but you can look at his. And his is a good website too. Okay? There are other websites. So you're not obligated to just pick one website. Okay? So, uh, okay, so we talked about attorneys, we talked about the general family members, we talked about the courts, and we just talked about the websites as well. Okay, so, now, here's the general fear, right? The general fear is, is that if I go to an organization or to a website that extracts the information from the courthouse, isn't everybody else going to be calling them? Yes. Right? Isn't that what you're thinking? <coughs> okay. Well, if, by definition then, what we're also saying is that everybody else is calling the expires. Yes or no? Yes. 
right? Is that the nature of the business? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to be I'm going to be honest with you. Not as many people are calling the expires, and not as many people are calling the probates leads, as you would think. Okay. Yes, you get a few people that will say I've been getting calls all day, but the the harsh reality is most people aren't prospecting. Okay. Well, they're not prospecting the probates, and they're not prospecting the uh, the uh, the expires. That's just the reality. So when you purchase, if you do get the leads, keep that in mind. Don't worry about that. Now, let's talk about what, what it is that you set. Okay? So let's say that you've reached the next level. You've already decided, I'm going to focus on this business. I'm going to get good at this business. And you decide, I'm going to go to, again, I'm recommending the Pasadena Courthouse. You got a question? Okay. So I'm going to say, you just, uh, let's go to the Pasadena Courthouse. You pull some probate files. You look at it. I'm not going to, this class isn't necessarily going to be on how to read all those, or how to read all those, all that court paperwork, because I can keep this here for a while. But eventually, you're going to start to understand it. Most importantly, what you're going to be looking for is the person that is the administrator. Okay? The administrator is the decision maker. Okay? Now, the administrator of the estate has either full or limited authority. Okay? This person has to petition to be the administer, administrator excuse me, of the estate. So let's go back to Michelle's example, okay? because I love her example, because this happens a lot, you guys, especially when you're on the phone, and especially when you're active, and especially when you're calling people. Okay, It's happened to me when you're calling someone, maybe even in notice of default. Okay? When you call someone and you say, hey, listen, you know, I noticed that your property is in default, etc., etc., it's happened to me where they say, well, listen, that person's passed on. I'm their niece, I'm their granddaughter, I'm their etc., etc. I've just been living in this house for the last four to six months. I've been waiting for them to foreclose. Uh, you get, nobody else has heard this before? Okay, I, I've heard it, you know, several times. Okay, this isn't just once in a while, this is something that I've heard. So understand that that person, that person may be able to petition, okay, they can file to go act as the administrator of the estate if nobody else has already or if the will did not designate who was going to handle the estate okay so it's very important that you ask them hey listen number one are you the administrator did you file the paperwork to be to petition the court to become the administrator of the estate right and you need to you need to ask them those things the next thing you can do is if they haven't done that and no one has been has been um, designated the administrator administrator of the estate is that this person could do it themselves. They can go pro per, right? Because a lot of times these people, what they're gonna tell you is they don't have the money to hire an attorney. They don't have the money for a retainer, okay? Now, uh, I will tell you, okay, that there are some attorneys, okay? I know of them because they've referred me business. There are some attorneys, they're few and far between, but there are some attorneys who will help them, okay, if they know that they're gonna be able to get paid through the HUD or through the escrow, okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But the bottom line is, this person needs to file, they need to file uh, their paperwork so they can petition to become the administrator, and then they either get full or limited authority. Full authority basically means that they're the decision maker. They can do anything they want. They, I mean, well, they, they can do anything for, toward, for the benefit of the heirs, right? Okay? So they don't, re it doesn't require the court to, to deem the price of the property. It doesn't require any auction of any type in the property. That person can sign a probate listing agreement and that person can sell the property. In fact, that person, I think, can even determine the price, okay, just so you know. But if they get limited authority, if that person gets limited authority, it's, it's uh, oftentimes it's because the heirs weren't all in agreement. In other words, they petitioned to become the administrator of the estate, but perhaps there was another person that said, well, no, I don't want that person to be, to be the sole administrator. Okay? So the court may give them limited authority. If that person gets limited authority, here's what's going to happen. The court is going to be involved in the entire process, which means the court is going to determine the price. They're going to send out what's called a, a court referee. Okay? The court referee is essentially just like an appraiser, and, the, and that court referee is going to go determine the price of the property. Then what's going to happen is you, as the listing agent, oh, and by the way, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the California probate law requires that a real estate agent be a part of the probate sales process, just so you guys know. Okay? By law, yes. Can you repeat that? California probate law requires that a real estate agent be a part of the actual process. It's by law. California probate law. Process of what? The sales process of the real estate that's involved in the, in the estate. Okay. I don't okay? understand that. You don't know? 
in other words, if there's real estate involved in the probate estate, an agent has to be a part of it. They need a listing agent. In other words, they have to have a listing agent. When that question, if the uh, attorney has a real estate license, can they act as an attorney and also as a real estate? They can. It could be considered a conflict of interest, but they can. Yeah. When the heirs don't agree on the sale of the property, do they still have to have the property? When the heirs don't agree on the sale of the property? Yeah, they just say, well, no, we want to keep the house. And there are other heirs that they don't want to keep it. That, that, all that stuff falls into more of the legal side of the, of, of the probate process. But it all falls on the head of the administrator. So when this person is petitioning to be the administrator, that's when other family members and other heirs have the opportunity to basically um, contest this person becoming the administrator. Even yeah. if it's stated in the will, though? Uh, well, Let's no, just say that if there it's stated is... in the will, and again, these are all legal questions, mm -hmm. but if it's stated in the will, that's it. This person is the administrator. Okay? But that still doesn't mean that people can't go in there and contest it. Because I've seen situations where the person that was uh, uh, designated the administrator by the will um, is somebody who's an active drug user or an alcoholic so you got another member of the family that's contesting it basically saying yeah I know the will says that but this person mm -hmm. this person is not fit to be the administrator of the of the estate so another person can contest it and still become the administrator of the estate I've seen that happen too it all depends on what the judge deems more fit for for the actual heirs and, and who's going to watch out for the best interest of the heirs okay so you've got either full authority this person was able to get full authority or this person was able to get limited authority Remember that the difference between the two is that when the administrator has full authority, you can sign a listing agreement with them and all you have to do is deal with them and you're done. The whole process, other than the fact that the forms are a little bit different, the process is very familiar to what we normally do. Mm -hmm. If it's limited, that's where the court's going to be involved throughout the process. They will determine the price. They will require that you advertise the property for a minimum number of days okay, on a newspaper. Now, the attorney will help, help everybody do, through this process, okay? um, but, but they have to promote the property. And then you have to get an offer, and offer is presented to the, to the attorney and to the court. It's accepted, and then that's when you go into the overbid. So what's the referee's job again? The court referee determines the price. When, when it's limited authority, as agents, we don't determine the price. When it's full authority, obviously we have an, input, an opportunity to provide our input and then the administrator agrees on the price and then we put it on the market for that price. How, how long is the process of, a, of appointing the administrator? Okay, so it could take, it, you know, every court is different, that's, that's the thing. So it's not really how long is it going to take. You know, if it's LA, downtown LA, it could take a really long time. You know, so it just depends. It could take anywhere from 60 days to, I've seen it, 120 days, depending on the court. Okay. So we talked a little bit about that. Um, everybody understand the, the, the difference between the two? Okay, so now let's say you were able to find someone, okay? And someone says to you, I'm the administrator of an estate, okay? I have full authority, okay? Which has happened to me, and they want to sell the property. Joshua Chinese and I, back when Joshua Chinese uh, was working directly with me, we had a probate estate over in Glassell Park. Remember that one? Probate? Uh, on Astara, right? Okay. That gentleman had full authority, okay? He signed the listing agreement. We set the price. He signed all the paperwork. It was a probate listing agreement. We sold the property. The disclosures were a little bit different. There was nothing, nothing other than the fact that the forms were a little bit different and the disclosures were less, right? You know, everything else was normal. Everything else was the same. Now, limited is obviously going to be a little bit different, okay? That's where, like, again, where the courts are going to be involved and where attorneys are going to be involved, and you're going to have to learn how to speak their language. Um, okay, so what would you, what are the scripts, okay? And this is very important. This goes back, in case you haven't noticed, I'm going back to basics a lot, okay? And you're going to hear me talking about a few things. So there's prospecting, okay? I've already spoke about prospecting. And then there's the scripts, okay? And these are things that we are harp on a lot in the company. We talk about prospecting. We talk about the scripts. It's very important that you understand, again, you're going to have to prospect. You're going to have to call these people. Again, you're going to have to know the scripts. You're going to have to know what to say to someone when you're calling them. So I will tell you that if I'm calling somebody on probate, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the phone and I'm going to say, Mr. or Mrs. John, right? Um, 
My name is Paul Argentel. We've never met. And if you've heard me call Paul, you know that this is what I say every single time. We've never met. I know that I'm calling you at home. Is it a good time to talk? Okay. I will always ask them, is it a good time to talk? Not only for probate, but for any type of call I'm making, I'm asking them, is it a good time to talk? Have any, has it, any of you here ever been bulldozed by someone, a salesperson on the phone, where they just slam you into the conversation? How does it make you feel? Terrible. It, it really it pisses me off, mm -hmm. especially as a salesperson. So from one sales professional to another sales professional, when they get on the phone and they don't even ask me if it's a good time to talk, you know, and, and they start rambling on, first thing I tell them is, hey, listen, I appreciate what you're doing, I respect what you're doing, because I'm also in the sales business, but I will tell you that you didn't even ask me what I was doing at this time. For all you know, I'm, on the, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So it's very important that we always ask them, is it a good time to talk? Okay? Now, I will tell you that sometimes people are gonna say what? Nope. No, it's not a good time to talk. And then you know what you say? No problem, I'll try back in a little bit. Now, I will tell you, you guys have all heard the phrase, curiosity kills the cat, right? Mm -hmm. The minute you say, no problem, I'll call you back, 80 to 90% of the time, they will say, it's all right, it's no big deal, what is it that you want? Yeah. Trust me, I, I do three to 400 calls a day. This is what happens, okay? I know this. So, John or Jane Doe, my name is Paul Argetta, we've never met, I know I'm calling you at home, is it a good time to talk? Yes, what do you want? Here's why I'm calling, okay? Um, I noticed that I was, on, upon my visit down at the LA County Courthouse, that the estate, uh, the probate estate of John Doe is, is going into probate, and I noticed that there was some real estate that was included in the estate. I'm a real estate practitioner. I'd like to know if you're planning on selling that property. Is it pretty simple? Mm -hmm. Yes, the script is pretty simple. I mean, it's just, it's pretty cut and dry. Okay. I was down at the LA County Courthouse, or upon reviewing the files that were down at the LA County Courthouse, or upon reviewing files from the Pasadena County Courthouse in probate, I noticed that the estate of John Doe is going through probate. There's real estate included in the estate, and I just wanted to know if you're planning on selling the property. Okay. Now, what are their potential answers going to be? Yes or no. It's not There's, a good time. Yeah, you might hear that. Not a good time to talk. Okay. Not right now. Not right now. Okay. Not a good time to talk, only because of the emotional position that they're in. You might hear this. Okay, this is something that I do hear. And and again, can you have empathy and can you have compassion for them at that point? Yeah. By all means, I think anybody can. Okay. Not a good time to talk. Not right now. Okay. Not right now. What else? We have to speak to our attorneys. Attorneys, okay. Speak to attorneys. Can you guys see this or am I writing too small? No, good. No? Good. It's okay. Yes. Is that 
people are passing on the people that were once a part of the baby boomer generation. Okay? The baby boomer generation was very what? They were very real estate rich. They were taught that you want to buy real estate, buy real estate, buy real estate, buy real estate. That's what you want to do is you want to buy real estate. The generations thereafter, what started happening was they became highly educated. They started going to school longer. They started staying at home longer. This new generation, especially for the younger kids, they're staying at home now into their 30s and their 30, even into their 40s. But they're highly educated, yes or no? They have doctorates. They have master's degree. Whereas people, people from our generation, most of the time, and our mindset was when we were 18, 20, we were taught, okay, you're 18, 20, go out and into the real world, get a job, yes or no? Okay. So that mindset has shifted. That paradigm has shifted a little bit to where now most people are actually staying at home longer and they're becoming highly educated, but they're also becoming highly leveraged because of their education debt, yes or no? So what's happening is the generation that is now passing on, unfortunately, right, which is just a natural part of life. It's the whole circle of life thing, if you will. right? What's happening is, is that as that generation passes on, the, the next generations, they're, they're, they're found, they find themselves with a lot of debt. And this is an opportunity where they're selling, they're selling this real estate to pay up a lot of the debt. Okay, you guys, this is one of the reasons that some of them are going to be selling the property. What are other reasons that people might be selling the property? Bingo. Because they don't live in the state where the property is. Okay, I've had clients who have probate, who, have, who whose, whose family member has passed on, and they live in other states, and they don't want to come out here. They don't want to maintain the property. They don't want to see the property. They don't want to deal with, with, with tenants. They don't want to deal with any of that. So it's just better for them to sell uh, the property. What are other reasons? Creditors. Okay. Unfortunately, another another harsh reality of life is that sometimes people just have a lot of debt and they have judgments and they have creditors. And so these creditors need to be paid off. And one way to pay them off is through is through the uh, through the probate estate as well. Okay. Property taxes as well. Right. Okay. So those are all those are all reasons. So if somebody says yes, I'm thinking about selling the property. I'm thinking about selling the property. What would your what would some of the next questions be? Okay. Somebody says yes. Here's here are the questions that you want to ask them. Right. Going back to what we talked about earlier. Number one, have you been awarded letters of administration? Right. Is that important to know? Okay. So number one, letters of admin because if they've been awarded letters of administration you're now talking to who the decision makers right so have you been awarded your letters of administration yes I have no I haven't but you've obviously filed because they had you have a probate case number right with the courts so they filed something bless you so number one have they filed their letters of administration okay it's very important and if they have do you know if you have full authority or do you have limited authority? Which one? Because then that's going to tell you, are you going to be dealing with them directly or are you going to be dealing with them, the court, and an attorney? Yes or no? Yes, right? Okay, so number one, do you have letters of administration? Two, if it's full authority and they have full authority, the next question is going to be what? We're going to go back to scripts, right? So if somebody says yes to you, I want to sell, what's the next thing that you would say? How soon do you want the property sold? Right? They say yes. I have I have letters of administration. I have full authority to sell this property. My next question would be fantastic. How soon do you want the property sold? And then I would ask them, are you familiar with the techniques that I would use to sell your property so that we can get the most money for the heirs. Yes or no? They're probably going to say no. Okay. What would be a good time to where I can show you? And then I start to go through my clothes, right? And I start getting ready to go through the clothes. And that's where scripts is very important, guys. It's important that you have those scripts down, right? Because then you start, and then you're also going to start to um, to pre-qualify them. Okay. You guys have, have you guys been doing that with the scripts as well, where you pre-qualify your people before you actually go to the appointments? If you feel comfortable with me and you feel comfortable with the things that I have to share with you, are you going to be ready to list that property and put the property on the market with me that day? You start to see what I'm saying? So that way you understand. In other words, by the time you show up to that appointment, there should be no question. They know that you're showing up to that appointment to help them sell the property. Okay? So again, I'm going back to it. Script, script, script. Prospecting and scripts. It's all, I mean, it's, it's, these are the basics, guys. And even though we're talking about probate, you're still going to have to get these things down so that you can apply it to the probate. Okay? So 
No, letters of administration. So that's if they have full. Now, what if they have limited? I only have limited authority. Okay? So limited authority, that means that they can still sign a listing agreement, though, right? But that the court is going to be involved and that the attorney is going to be involved. So here's what, some of, here's what I hear when I'm prospecting. Some of the times they say, no, I have limited authority and I'm working with my, an attorney right now. And the, I'm going to leave it in the hands of the attorney. So what would you say to that? Right. So the next question would be, obviously, so then what you're saying is it's better that I speak to your attorney. With your permission, I'd like to give your attorney a call. What is the best number to get a hold of him at or her at? Um, what's the best telephone number so that I can contact them? Are mornings good or are evenings better? All right? Then you get the attorney's information and you contact the attorney. Now, again, some of these attorneys, guess what? Just like banks, just like other institutions, they're going to have relationships that they've established over the years, right? They're going to have relationships that they've established with other agents over the years. So guess what you might hear when you call that attorney? Here we go. I have an agent that I've been working with for the past 10 to 15 years. Do you know how many times I've heard that? Okay. But I will tell you that I'm still going to call and I'm still going to ask and I'm still going to do this now and I'm still going to prospect. But here's what you have to ask yourself next. What is going to differentiate you between yourself and the other agent that you're trying to get in there, okay? Because in the real world, there are people out there that are going to work harder, faster, just because they're gonna to try to get the business in soon on. So that person may have relationships with people that they've had for the past 20 years, but does that mean that they won't give you a shot if you can show them that you can provide better service? That is always an opportunity. So how do you do that? If an attorney says to you, I've been working with an agent for the past 15 to 20 years, and that's whom I give all my probate business to right now, he or she does a fantastic job for me. You know, what my next response would be, not a problem, I'll tell you what, just to show you in good faith how committed I am to helping people, you know, especially in probate. Have you taken a look at the property? Has the agent taken a look at the property? Well, no. Well, do you have pictures of what the property looks like right now? Well, no. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna be in the area, the property, let's say the property is located in Glendale. I have to go visit a client in Glendale in the next couple of days or so. And what I'd like to do is I'm just gonna pop by and I'm gonna take a quick picture of the property and then I'm gonna email you the picture of the property just so that you can get a feel for what the property looks like right now. Okay, now why am I doing that? Right, but why us? Bingo, because of the condition. Because here's the truth. The truth is, if it's a probate property, again, and this is just me being, being brutally honest, and if someone has passed away and they've neglected the property, is that going to reflect, or is that going to reflect in the condition of the property? Yeah. It is. And in many cases, there have been times where the family members, you know, they may have limited authority, and they may live in another state, and they haven't seen the property at all, so they don't even know what's going on. Okay. Now remember that the goal, the goal here is to help the heirs get as much money as possible. Right? That's our job. That's our fiduciary responsibility as real estate practitioners when we deal with probate. We're trying to get them as much money as possible. Well, if they're being hit with violations by the city because they've got grass this high, because they've got branches that are touching their neighbor's roof, but because they've got vagrants, because there's broken windows, because there's vandalism on the property, and the city is hitting them with multiple fines, is that going to affect their bottom line when it comes to how much the heirs are going to get? It is. It is. If you've got, if you have a, a someone that's broken into the property, okay, and they're now a squatter, and it's in Los Angeles, where which is very tenant friendly in Los Angeles, right? Okay, and you now have to evict the squatter, is and you may have to hire an attorney to do that. Is that going to cost the heirs more money? It is. So at the end of the day, guess what? By you just saying, hey, listen, I'm going to be in that part of town next Wednesday, next Thursday, or on, on, in two days from now. And I'll tell you what, just as a courtesy, just to show you, I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna take a couple pictures of the property for you, just so that you know the condition of the property, because the last thing you want is to get hit with any violations. Nobody, when was the last time you saw the property attorney? You think the attorney's gonna take a look at the properties? No. They, they don't care. You know, I'm sure they care about the client, but that's just not part of their protocol. That's not part of their job. And many times the heirs haven't been to the property either for whatever reason, or the heirs have been to the property, they just don't know how to deal with what's going on. That's where we, as real estate professionals, come in and we step in and we take control and we say, look, let me offer you, let me show you my level of service. 
I'm gonna go take some pictures of the property. I'll email it to you in a couple days. I want you to know the condition of the property so that you can see what we see out on the street. Is that okay with you? Not a problem? What's your email address so that I can send you those pictures? Hello. Hello, Sarah. I'm Yeah, you're, I mean, everybody, you're going to hear about judgments and liens. Yeah, a lot of things are going to come up. But that's why it's very important that we as agents review the preliminary title, you know, and we order them. It's very important that you guys understand what are possible liens and judgments on the property as well. Okay, so are, is, are we all on the same page at this point right now with, like, the letters of administration, right? So we went over the script real quick. John or Jane, my name's Paul. We've never met. I know I'm calling you at home. Is it a good time to talk? I'm calling in reference to the estate of John Doe. I noticed that there was some real estate that was included in the estate. I'm a real estate broker. Are you going to be planning on selling the property? Yes, we are. Fantastic. Have letters of administration already been issued? Yes, they have. Do you have full authority or do you have limited authority? Full authority. Fantastic. How soon do you want to have the property sold? In the next 60 days. Next 60 days. Great. Are you familiar with the techniques that I would use to sell your property so that I can get the heirs the most money possible? No. Great. Is Tuesday good for you or would you prefer Thursday? I'd love to pop by and at least show you what I would do so that I could sell that property for you. Is 1 good or do you prefer 4 p.m. in the afternoon? Et cetera, et cetera. Are you guys understanding how this works? Okay. Now, limited authority? I, you know, I have limited authority. No problem. Are you familiar with the techniques that I would use to help you sell your home? All right. Now you can list the pro well no excuse me if there's limited authority guess what the court referee is going to give you the price right so you go back to the original question I'm sorry um, well, are you going to be planning on selling this property yes do you have letters of administration yes fantastic do you have full authority or limited authority I have limited authority great has the court referee gone out to the property and had, have they determined the price for the property yet. Because remember, if it's limited, we don't determine the price. Who does? Correct. The court. And you have to issue it. Now, can the court make a mistake on the price? Can they overprice it sometimes? Yes. Yeah. Can they underprice it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're all human beings. It's just another appraiser going out there and determining the price. So now you find out that they have limited authority, right? Has the court referee gone out to determine the price for this property? And if the answer is yes, great. What's that price? Well, the court referee says that it's for $299. The court referee says it's for $899. $899, fantastic. Are you familiar with the techniques that I would use to sell this property so that we could help the heirs get the most money possible? No? And then I go back into the script over and over again. Are you guys, are you guys understanding this? So it's very important that these scripts are down so that you understand how to address it. You just have to know which angle, excuse me, not which angle, which road you're going to travel on, right? Are you going to sell the property? and have letters of administration been issued and is it full or is it limited and if it's limited has the court referee gone out yet you guys getting this and then you schedule appointment you know service no now let's say uh they let's and you know what even sometimes there are times when you have people that have full authority they have full authority and guess what they'll still say i want to talk to my attorney 
okay? That does happen. It's happened to me. I have, they have full authority. They don't even need their attorney's permission to sign the listing agreement, okay? And they still want to counsel with their attorney. No problem. I'd love to have a conversation with your attorney. What's a good time where I can give them a call? What's the best telephone number to contact your attorney so that I can, you know, so that I can tell them how I can help serve you guys and help get the heirs the most money possible, okay? And then you contact the attorney. Now, when you are purchasing the leads, when you're purchasing those type of leads, they will give you the administrator or the executor, right? And then they will also give you the attorney. They will give you all that information, okay? It is your job to basically contact them both. I will tell you that I will contact them both. Now, there will be times where the attorneys themselves will tell you they are not going to sell the property. And you know what I've discovered? They're not lying, but I've discovered that maybe that attorney wasn't just on top, as on top of their client as much as they should have. Because I've had clients where the attorneys told me, no, I'm, they don't want to sell the property. And two weeks later, I've listed their property. Leonard Street in, in, uh, in Canyon Country was a perfect example of that. That was a probate uh, sale, a condo that we sold, and I had contact with the attorney, and the attorney was like, they're not going to sell it, they're not going to sell it, they're not going to sell it. Well, I thought, okay, I want to hear it from, from their mouth. So I would call them back anyway, and I called them, and sure enough, we listed the property, and the property was sold. Yeah? We talked about probate when there's a will. What about there's no will? There's, those are intestate. It, it, it's, when someone passes on without a will, it's intestate, and there's different intestate laws. And again, only because I'm not an attorney, it's very difficult for me to explain that whole process. And to become completely honest with you, I'm not very familiar with that, with that type of process myself, personally. I am with the probate, but not with the the, the intestate. What is the, the, the process, the time frame when there's a will involved? When there's a will involved? Well, it all depends how quickly someone files the petition for the rights to be the administrator. It's all about that. Uh, so probate Yes, because what happens is, is that you've got people that are within the family that are competing. Well, number one, you may have some people that don't file the paperwork right away. If I have some people that, that a person passed away and they didn't file probate until eight months because they just they went through the whole grieving process. Michelle, how long? How? Two years. Two years. So the person that she had spoken to was the, the granddaughter? No. Daughter. Daughter. And her mother had passed away two years and she still had to file for the petition to be the administrator. And we are just now, Adam and, and, and they spoke to, to your client, or they, they left her message. Um, they're just now filing and it took two years. So the delay isn't necessarily caused by the court system in as much as sometimes it's just caused by people not filing a petition and can be able to do it. Does the court determine the commission pay to the No. 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 Um, Typically it's going to be 5 to 6%. Um, uh, uh, for, uh, the letters from the administration have to be there's no one opposing them as the administrator, and on the will it designates them as the administrator, and they have full authority, there should be the problem. When you run into problems is when you start to have people that, two people that both want to be the administrators, and they're both opposing each other, and they both file. Then you, I have one case that I'm sitting on right now where my clients, I'm representing one sister that wants to sell the property, but her other sister also filed to be administrator of the estate. And they're, they are mudslinging each other. They're just saying that each other is doing a whole bunch of bad stuff because they both want to be the administrator. Uh, let me tell you, when I, when I was um, uh, the driver of the Mysores, and uh, we paid for a couple of days, uh, we got to uh, the and we closed both, and uh, we closed both, like, in two months. So How did you get them? Uh, paying the Mysores. Okay, so you got leads, and then what did you do?
you've got probate, you've got prospect, you've got um, scripts, and then you've got follow-up. Okay? So it's very important that you, you know, when you're doing this, that you understand you're still going to have to prospect them. You're going to have to know the scripts. You're going to have to know what to say. But more importantly, you're also going to have to follow up with them. It's going to take some follow-up, especially because some of these, again, if they don't have the letters of administration, right, or if court confirmation is going to be required, you know what I mean, you're going to have to get good at following up. So you want to make sure that if you call them and they say, yes, I do want to sell, you know, you make sure that, that you, 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 you approach them, you find out when is the court date so that you find out if you're going to be given full authority or limited authority, when you're going to go back. And most of these people know. They'll tell you, I have people that tell me, you know, on such and such date, I'm going back to the court. And then I schedule it on my calendar to make sure that I call them back so that I can follow up right after they've been they've gone to court so that I can stay on top of it. Okay? So it's, you've got to make sure that you follow up with these people, uh, you know, and stay on top of it. Because, again, yes, there are going to be some people that are going to be out there that, are going to, that, that might be contacting them. But more importantly, you're also going to have some attorneys that do have relationships and that they may want to refer that business out to other, to other agents. So in the court date, they get a word in the letter of administration? Um, well, it depends on what they were filing, what they were petitioning for. Do you get what I'm saying? I mean, if they're petitioning for it, yeah, they'll have a court date for that. But then they may also have a court date because an offer has already been accepted. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about limited, really quick. If it's limited authority, if you've got limited authority and, and court confirmation is required. So you get the listing, right? Well, first, the court referee gives us the price, right? Then you get, I'm spelling that wrong, but whatever. Then you get the listing agreement that's signed, okay? Then you advertise the listing, right? Mm -hmm. You promote the listing. Then you get an offer. <coughs> the offer is then presented to the administrator and to the attorney, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna review it, they're gonna see if they deem that the highest and best possible offer that they can get at that time, right? Mm -hmm. They accept the offer. It's then presented to the courts, right? The court hears that there's an accepted offer. Then we go back and we advertise that an offer has been accepted. Then we have to go back to court. And if there's nobody else there that wants to overbid over the offer that was accepted, this person's offer wins. You guys get that? But if other people are there and they do want to challenge and they want to overbid, they have that opportunity. Who here has been at the probate process when there's overbid? Have you guys been there? Yeah, yeah, you've been there, right? Ace, Ace has been there. So every probate, you have a chance to overbid at the court? Is that what you're saying? If there's court confirmation that's required, yeah. So Remember, if they have full authority, the court's not even wrong. Huh? What does court confirmation really mean? It's just essentially what it's saying is that the the the, the court has only given li limited authority to the, that administrator, and that they they feel the need to basically oversee the entire process is that okay. to protect the benefit of the heirs. And that's only limited. That's only unlimited, right? So this is this is essentially the process when when court confirmation is required, you guys. Okay. So now the beauty of it is is and again, you know. Like the beauty of it is, a real estate agent has to be a part of this process when you're the listing agent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What happens if a buyer shows up without an agent? Yeah. The buyer shows up without an agent to the courthouse and they overbid here and they want to overbid. Let's say you accepted an offer. You did everything that you were supposed to do. So we went through the whole script. Do we, uh, let's walk. Let's walk through it one last time. This is gonna be the last time, right? You have a lead. You give the lead a call. Hi, John or Jane Doe. Listen, we've never met. My name is Paul Argueta. Uh, uh, I'm calling in reference to the probate estate case of Jane Doe, right? I noticed that there's some real estate involved in the estate, and I wanted to see if you guys were going to be planning on selling that property. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Have you guys been awarded letters of administration? Yes, we have. You have. Fantastic. Right? Was it full or limited authority? It was limited authority. Great, limited authority. Has a court referee gone out and already determined the price of the property? Yes, the court referee has gone out and they have determined the property and the property value is about 399,000. 399,000, great. 
Have you already put it on the market? No. Are you familiar with the techniques that I would use to market this property? No, great. What's a good time where I can pop by so that I can show you how I can help get you guys and get the heirs the most money possible? Is Tuesday good or would you prefer Thursday? Are mornings better or would you prefer afternoons? The afternoons, would you prefer 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock, you show up, right? Now, here's the, now, once you get the listing, right? Referee determines the price. You've now got the listing. You market the property. We advertise it, right? And we promote the property. If an offer comes in, let's say the offer is from an outside broker. Let's say the offer that is accepted comes from another office, but, the, but our attorney and our administrator, they determine that that's the highest and best offer that we can get at this time and they accept it. That offer is then, the court is then notified, an offer has been accepted. They advertise it for a certain number of days, right? And then later on they postpone another court date, right, in the future to give additional overbidders an opportunity. Here's where it gets interesting. If a buyer shows up without another agent, and they overbid this property, guess who gets to be their agent? You. You do. You do. Okay? So that's one of the, the beauties of being able to represent the heirs and being able to help them get the most money possible when you're dealing with, with the limited authority. So there are some advantages or some disadvantages to, 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 the, to the entire process. But at the end of the day, and we're just going to close out with this, at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, we're still doing what? We're in the service related industry and we are paid and I say this all the time in direct proportion to the number of families that we serve so ultimately it's our job to make sure that in this case we're trying to help them to get the most money possible guys okay that's really the goal and in, in some cases and, and this is advanced stuff but in some cases you're gonna see that with some of these properties if you can slap on a coat of paint and cut some weed and cut some stuff think that maybe in, 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 on some of these properties you'll be able to net them some more money yes okay so here's where it's important to make sure that you guys have vendors that you have some people okay, in your back pocket in other words we as real estate practitioners we have our own vendors we have all our own stuff who understand that hey if I say to them listen I've got a property that's worth eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars but right now based on the condition it's in we're not getting any offers above seven hundred because the weeds are up to here and because we got some trees that need to be trimmed hey mr. or mrs. landscaper could you do me a favor could you help us out right and could you we pay you at the end of the transaction there are contractors that are willing to do this right now guys okay so long as they know that they'll get paid you know if you can fix up a property a little bit just to get that those heirs a little bit more money is it worth it to them do you look like a superstar Yes, yeah, so that's advanced stuff, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but I just wanted everybody to get the gist of the, of the probate process from the perspective of the agent and what we need to do in order to, 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 to get that business. Any questions? Because I see some people falling asleep. Yes, sir. Um, the Alvarez probate rules, uh, you know, they can offer is that the probate is that it's based on your answer, that we can offer by the extent of the um, when you're representing the buyer? When you represent the buyer, um, there isn't necessarily a rule of thumb in terms of what you can offer. You offer what your client feels comfortable offering. So if the client, if your buyer feels like they only want to offer 90% of what the list price is, then that's their prerogative. Um, there's no law that says that they can only offer 90% or they can offer less than 90 There's no law that states that. The buyer can offer whatever they want to offer. But right now, with the inventory levels as low as they are and the current market that we're in, you know, sometimes offering 90% isn't enough to actually get the property in this market. Uh, well, if it's full authority, it's as, long, it's as quickly as the buyer can close. If it's limited authority, it can be 60 to 120 days, 180 days, depending on the courts, depending how quickly they're, they're, they're moving. All right? Any other questions? Okay, so who, who here is going to go out there and who here is going to help some some heirs and some family members that are in probate? You guys feel a little bit more comfortable now with the information? Okay, guys. So again, it's all about us prospecting and scripts. you got to make sure that you, you get that stuff done. All right? And with that, we'll close out the meeting. Guys. All right? I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.